Hello, I'm Dr. Uday Prakash. I'm the Director and Specialist Joint Replacement Surgeon at Uday Omni Hospital in Hyderabad. See, there, there's, uh, joint replacement surgery is, uh, is, has always been up and coming. There are a lot of innovations within the, uh, within the industry. Um, the, the, uh, the design of the uh, knee as well as hip uh, and other joint replacements has improved a lot over the years. Uh, certainly the metallurgy has improved, the metals have improved, the bearings have improved. Uh, the patients are able to do a lot more in terms of activity than they used to. Uh, the doctors are also um, now telling their patients to uh, do more and more uh, with their joint replacements than they used to. Uh, these days the patients can uh, play sports, uh, gentle sports, Not I'm not talking about football or cricket, but certainly gentler sports like tennis, doubles tennis, badminton, uh, skiing, golfing, that kind of stuff. So I think um, in terms of metals and metallurgy and bearings, uh, there's been a lot of improvement. Designs have improved. Uh, the um, the surgeries themselves um, have evolved a lot from uh, big incisions, big soft tissue dissections to minimally invasive um, uh, approaches uh, to hips, to knees, to ankles. Uh, the design of instrumentation has improved over the years uh, so that uh, the surgeons are able to do these operations through smaller incisions with less soft tissue dissection and um, the accuracy of placement has improved not only with the instrumentation but also with the computer navigation. Um, the computer navigation has been around for a number of years. The acceptance has been slow because the real effect uh, and function has not been demonstrated. Although the alignment of uh, the components has is a lot better with computer navigation, and uh, parallelly, parallelly the um, robotic. Uh, assisted joint replacement surgery along with computer navigation has evolved to such an extent that safety uh, in joint replacement is now much more effective, much more predictable. Uh, the um, um, component alignment is much more predictable. The soft tissue balancing is a lot more predictable. Yes, I think um, now as uh, I'll talk in specific to a country like India, where joint replacement was pretty much unheard of, uh, maybe a couple of de decades ago. Um, even then, uh, maybe a couple of surgeons were doing it. However, off late, uh, everybody has heard of knee replacement surgery and is now uh, accessible to the masses. Uh, there are certain um, types of joint replacement which perhaps uh, are still very limited to the masses because very few surgeons are doing it. The, the need, um, so basically the, the accessibility, the market is huge. The, the number of uh, the expertise is limited uh, in certain types of joint replacements, but the, the main type of uh, joint replacement, which is the knee replacement, and which is also the most common type of problem in a country like India, is now widely available. However, we'll talk about it later, the type of knee replacements have changed over the years. See, I think the challenges uh, now uh, to uh, the doctor as well as the patient is trying to avail the best type of surgery uh, within the constraints of the financial system, the policies of the government. Um, we now have uh, the um, uh, much touted and talked about um, national government scheme called the Ayushman Bharat, um, which is now available to, to everybody. Uh, however, there are a lot of issues that I personally have uh, with the scheme. Um, for me to be able to provide uh, world-class care uh, with these kind of type of schemes, uh, I would be very reluctant to do so because of the lack of accessibility to the good type of equipment, the good prosthesis, for the amount of money the hospital is going to be compensated. So, uh, for example, if you want to have a knee replacement done um, at Aishman um, Bharat, um, I think uh, the amount of money that the hospital gets for a knee replacement is roughly perhaps only 40% or less than that, 33% of what the hospitals normally charge uh, to a cash paying patient or an insurance patient. So for that amount, who's going to do the surgery? What kind of joint replacement are we going to use? Um, is this going to be long lasting? Is it just going to uh, put a tick that we have done this operation? How is the patient going to feel after it? Is the patient going to have a good function after such surgery? Is the patient going to be happy after such surgery? I mean, it's, it's, it's a big question. So um, I think there are a lot of questions to be answered here. 
Personally, as a joint replacement surgeon, I would not like to accept these schemes because I will not be able to do quality job to my patient. I would rather not do the surgery than put the patient in trouble after surgery. So that is my bottom line. I think uh, uh, the policymakers have to take a broader view, uh, speak to a lot more uh, people who are actually on the factory floor doing the job day in, day out, and not just roll it out just for the sake of, you know, um, I've done this and I've done that. Um, so uh, the innovation uh, generally has come from the West. Um, there are a lot of pecu peculiarities of the Indian population and the design of the joint replacement may not necessarily uh, fit the Indian population. There's potential to do a lot of research in uh, analyzing the, the morphology and the morphometry of the Indian patient. Um, luckily, because the Westerners have understood the need uh, and the requirements of, of the Asian population, they have gone on and produced many more sizes and generally 90%, 95% of the times we are able to use the Western implant to fit the Indian patient. However, there is a huge scope um, which may be uh, limited uh, if, if the, uh, there is going to be a lot of capping on pricing, um, the, the research takes a lot of money and if the industry doesn't see a return uh, because the pricing is capped, then they're not going to be coming to India or even if they do come to India, they're going to use our skills, our services, but not be able to sell the implant within India because the costs uh, are capped or the pricing is capped. So I think uh, one has to now think practically, uh, even now with the N NPPA uh, capping and knee replacements, many people do not have access to the best uh, in, in this area. Uh, many people have to, um, if they want the best in this area, may have to go abroad uh, to even countries like uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh rather than in India. So it's, it's rather tragic uh, and sad to see a, a forward-looking country like India uh, be constrained by certain policies where surgeons are not um, able to access the best in the industry. The crowd, the population at best, is not allowed to access the best in the industry when we can send uh, uh, probes and uh, rockets into space and into Mars and into Moon, why can't we have access to good uh, implants? Yes, I think this is, um, the partial knee replacement is very close to my heart. Uh, it's something that I've been doing for uh, many years. Uh, started off in Britain, but when I finally came back to India five years ago, I introduced the concept of partial knee replacement to Hyderabad. It's not a new concept. However, accessibility to training uh, in partial knee replacement is limited across the world. Uh, and if you take a country like the UK, which has the biggest joint registry, only 10% of the knee replacements are partial knee replacements, uh, purely because uh, of uh, the lack of training and lack of understanding of how partial works. Um, I strongly believe in it because uh, the uh, function of a partial knee replacement is far superior to a total knee replacement and almost 50% of my practice is partial knee replacement when, potential, when uh, actually all these 50% in other hospitals generally end up getting a total knee replacement. So it's like you know changing the whole tire for a small puncture, it's not necessary or doing open heart surgery for instead of putting a stent. So um, the, the outcomes are far better in terms of function. The mortality and the morbidity are a lot less um, after surgery. Transfusion rates are less. The patient has a, a lot more natural feel to it and they're more likely to get back to a very active lifestyle with a partial than a total knee replacement. I accept that total knee um, by and large gives good results, but there is a significant, there's almost 20 to 30 uh, percent of population who've had knee replacements, total knee replacements, who are dissatisfied with their operation. And I'm sure this 30% would have been happier with a partial knee replacement.